Taiwan is under constant threat from China. Not just the military, but also infiltration in its democracy. How is Taiwan resisting? Welcome back to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. Taiwan is on the front lines of a battle with the Chinese Communist Party. And few people understand that, like DPP legislator Wang Tingyu. He's chairman of the legislature's Foreign Affairs and National Defense Committee. I sat down with him in Tainan to talk about the tactics the Chinese Communist Party uses to destroy democracy and how Taiwan can save the Indo-Pacific region from a dangerous authoritarian state. Well, thank you for joining me today. Yes, thanks for your time. Yeah, you, you bet. So how is the Chinese Communist Party trying to infiltrate Taiwan? They try to do this for decades, mm -hmm. more than 40 years. And now go with the technology development. They have a new way to do the old tricks. Mm -hmm. For example, in Taiwan, they have uh, three basic tactics mm -hmm. to penetrate Taiwan society. First, using their economic power to seduce to lure Taiwanese businessmen mm -hmm. and become their inve investment and then using all these economic conditions to tight to tight Taiwanese businessmen, make them follow, cherish the relationship with the communist. Mm -hmm. If you need a relationship to do your business in China, then you need, need to be a good friend you need to show your goodwill step by step. Then they can use, they call Yi Shang Bi Zhen, using the businessmen business to influence policy making. Mm -hmm. Second way, they are using some, we call psychological warfare. Mm -hmm. They are using their Air Force, Navy, go around Taiwan Island. It's not only try to shake in Taiwanese will try to show their muscle to uh, block those help from United States in Guan Island or Okinawa and our neighborhood country and try to tell Taiwan, listen to us, you can have the relationship to do business, to make money. If you don't listen to us, listen to Chinese communists, you will, you will face the missiles you will face the crisis, all the possibilities to create a, a tiny wall that, that will destroy your stock market, will influence your life. And uh, the third way is ongoing now. And uh, I'm afraid maybe they are doing this in the, all the democratic countries around the world. They try to use in some eco, they call education. They're using some literature, uh, cultural, cultural engagement, try to ask Taiwanese primary school, the deans, the principals, the students, mm -hmm. come to China. The only, the only thing you need to just buy the ticket, everything, they will, they will take, take care of that. You know, it's interesting that some of these tactics you're talking about, because with some differences, it does sound very similar to things the Chinese Communist Party is doing in the United States yeah. as well. They're doing that too. For example, if uh, your capital here, try to pass a law, favor Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe their ambassador will protest it himself, but they will try to ask some big company in the United States, try to influence your lawmakers. Mm -hmm. They're doing that. Sometimes they will buy the advertisement in the cable TV, try to create some kind of voice to interfere democracy uh, function because Chinese communists, they know one thing. You know, in North Korea or China, this kind of country, the head is the most important. The mm -hmm. leader, the, that one, dictator, Xi Jinping, Jin Zheng En, they are the most important. They are everything. But in our country, as a democracy country, election by people will create the power to deal, to steal, to control this country. So if you can influence the rule of the game of election, you will control a democracy country. Mm -hmm. 
So they try, they know that. So they try using some, using money to contribution, to contribute, donate some money to some certain guy, try to beat democracy by democracy way. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm happy to observe these two years, United States, Trump administration, Taiwan, Japan, Australia, Canada, they all notice this situation. It's quite serious. We have a lot of plan and uh, program. We cooperate together since maybe two years ago. Hmm. Well, it seems to me that if uh, the rest of the world wants to understand what the Chinese Communist Party is doing in their own countries, they really need to look at Taiwan. Yeah. Taiwan, we are in the front line. The cyber attack through the internet attack our uh, like our, our formal, uh, our government uh, attack our traffic control system, attack our civil system every month more than 45 million times. Mm. Cyber attacked every month 45 million times. And uh, the content, this information attack mm -hmm. each day almost 1 million. Each day? each day, almost one million spreading from, they, they are using v, VPN, mm -hmm. maybe send a fake news or disinformation from China, but they will jump to Mexico, then Mexico to Taiwan, something like that. And uh, that amount create chaos, especially during election. Mm -hmm. they, were, they, they were manufacturing some half real, half fake then totally fake. And uh, throw this content by, uh, from their platform, then inside of our country has their, we call echoing, echoing system. We we'll catch that, share, and then spread. Then some TV station, mass media, they are their allies, partners, using that kind of rumors, gossips, fake news, become a true news. Mm broadcasting to TV, then people will believe that. Well, I know the Democratic Progressive Party recently passed the Anti-Infiltration Act. Uh, what is that bill about? Actually, uh, we call it national security law lawmaking process. We have two major parts. The first major part is focus at uh, spying or military or some similar uh, warfare. So we, we fix our crime law. We met China to become Chinese spy. We put them on our crime law. It's uh, life sentence to death penalty. Mm -hmm. We increase the, uh, the penalty. And we fix our national security law. If you are helping Chinese communists to develop their organization in Taiwan. Then before, maybe only two, under two years, now it's more than seven, seven years to life sentence. So let, that, let law system is especially focused at the spy, mm -hmm. sabotage. And then the second part is what we just passed. Mm -hmm. uh, this is we call dem uh, democracy protecting law. You know, in a democratic, in a democracy society, we encourage people to vote, to become a candidate, to donate to the candidate you favor, mm -hmm. to speak. You can have a parade, you can have a demonstration on the street. You can lobby. You can lobby for the law you want. You can send out or receive all different kinds of information. All this behavior, it's democracy mm -hmm. themselves. We, we encourage them to do that. But if this normal democracy behavior got polluted by your enemy, mm -hmm. do you need to forbid that? In Taiwan, we, for, we, we have a law to regulate party, political party, military, and the government cannot own media. You cannot own media. Media must be, must be owned by people. 
cannot be political party, military, or government. We have struggled decades to establish this law for about 10 years ago. So if Taiwanese military, Taiwanese government, Taiwanese uh, party cannot own media, can we allow our media owned by Chinese Communist Party, mm. PLA? Certainly not. So we, we now become a, we, we just pass the law. We just regulate the behavior. If you receive Chinese Communist money, mm -hmm. order, authorization to donate to certain party or candidate, using their illegal money to interfere our normal de 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 democratic behavior, then you violate the law. So that's sort of how the Chinese Communist Party uses democracy to undermine democracy. Yes, we, we have observed this. We, we, try to, we try to establish a law system, but we don't want to choke the democracy itself mm -hmm. because the freedom and the democracy is what we are proud of. That's what Taiwan exactly. stands for. Yeah. So we cannot have a law. Otherwise, we we'll just become a North Korea. That will be easier. Mm -hmm. But we don't like that. So we have a lot of debating, arguing, and uh, using a lot of time. Then we regulate five behavior. This five behavior also authorized or sponsored by Chinese communists, by our foreign enemies. Then you break the law. We have a we have an example like this. To drink alcohol, you didn't break a law. Mm -hmm. To drive a car, you don't break a law. But if you, trade, if you drink alcohol and drive the car, you break a law. Mm -hmm. Something like this. So if you are doing business with Chinese communists, even you get money from Chinese government, yeah, you didn't violate any law. Mm -hmm. you, you become a ten candidate. You donate money to some party or candidate. You love you lobby for your the your law you favored. You want to uh, send in some information. It's okay, but if you got ordered and get money, then to become a candidate, or to sponsor, or to sabotage some demonstration parade, or to spread some fake news, then you break this law. And uh, according to our postures the majority of Taiwanese people support to establish this law because they all worry about this. Well, I know there's been some pushback to the Anti-Infiltration Act from Taiwan's other dominant political party, the KMT. Why is that? No, KMT, they are in, uh, to this law, they are in awkward position. Voters, they say, they want this law because they know Taiwan need this. Mm -hmm. Beijing does, of course, they don't want this law. Obviously. And the uh, KMT, Kuomintang, they are, they are, they are China-friendly mm -hmm. party, and uh, they have strong relationship and a connection with China. So they are in, in, in some awkward condition. They want, they, want in, they want to win the election. They need votes. Mm -hmm. But if they don't follow or don't cooperate with their friends in Beijing. Maybe something bad will happen because they, they have too, too many things in communist hands. So I, I, as I recall, that day we tried to pass the law. KMT, their legislator, come inside to the, the hall, sit on the ground, yell some slogan, then put a ma mask on and I keep silence for five, five hours, mm -hmm. then the law passed. They didn't, they didn't resist. They didn't try to stop the lawmaking process. But they, they are showing their attitude that they don't like this law. Mm -hmm. But they know if they using physical conflict to stop the law, they will lose the, the trust of voters. So democracy. Democracy win. Mm. Yeah. So as chairman of the Foreign Affairs and National Defense Committee, what are some other national defense issues you think the Taiwan government should be concerned about? This is a big question. Because we, 
we have a lot of things need to catch up with. Now in in Indo-Pacific or Oriental Asia, there are four potential crises. These four potential crises will cause if something bad happened, we 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 kill the economy globally. Mm -hmm. North Korea, East China Sea, Taiwan Strait, and the South China Sea. Mm -hmm. These four potential crises not only influence the re uh, regional politics, but also influence the global economy. And the Taiwan play important role in three of these four. So we have we have a lot of discuss with discussion with uh, United States. I always told my friend in, in in Capitol Hill. I say, once Taiwan secured, Indo Pacific will be secured. Once Taiwan stabilized, this region this region will be stabilized. So how to stabilize? We Taiwanese we know this country is my home. The only one has responsibility to protect Taiwan is ourselves. We cannot rely on Americans or the other friends. Friends can help, but we need to depend on ourselves. And what we need, we don't have enough uh, high technology weapon. Since 2013, PLA, Chinese uh, People Liberation Army, they, they have modernized their equipment. They, put a lot of money in their air force power and the naval power. Yeah, they want to be a world superpower. We want to defend our home. It's kind different kind of straight strategy uh, consideration. We don't need to build a Taiwan so big to against China. We just need enough power to protect Taiwan and to fulfill our responsibility in East China Sea. Taiwan Strait and the South, South China Sea. We own the largest island in South China Sea. We have, I cannot give you, cannot give you detailed figures. We have hundreds of our young men and women post in South China Sea. Mm -hmm. So we need underwater uh, equipment like submarine and we are building it on our own. And I do believe we, from now on, within three years, we will have the first made by Taiwan, the most modernized uh, submarine. I believe so. And uh, thanks to our friends' help, we, have, we, we, we are going to have the first uh, M1A2T, the battle tank. Mm -hmm. You know, what, we, what my army using, the tank we are using now is 40 years ago, mm -hmm. World War II. Yeah. And, uh, after 20 years, we eventually we got the F-16V. So this is a hot wheel. And we, we, the past three years, we have new regulation and a new pension system. We increase the military, those young men and women, we increase their payment. Mm. We increase their retired pension. So try to stabilize our military. So. This is inside to strengthen our own power. And using Taiwanese, we have some strength on auto control. We built a lot made in Taiwan weapon system to protect our seashore or something like that. But for DPP, it, in the future, it, for the coming four years, what we need, or actually what this region need, because if you believe Taiwan stabilized, then you can stabilize this region. What I need is, we need more opportunity to cooperate with our international friends. Well, so what would you like to see happen as far as U.S.-Taiwan relations? Maybe invite Taiwan to join um, uh, RIMPAC. You know RIMPAC? It's a military exercise. Nothing big deal, but in Asia, Taiwan and North Korea are the only two countries never got invited. Mm. Taiwan and North Korea. Those two countries usually aren't mentioned in the same sentence. Uh, but no, uh, United States, they, they canceled the invitation to China last time. Mm. So I hope this year, 
every two years they have a RIMPAC military exercise. I hope we can get inv inv invite. It's kind of simple, but it's also real. It means our pan we are partners. We are in the system. Once the system strong enough, uh, the conflict will happen. War will happen only in imbalanced situation. If the, the all the all the power they got even, at that situation the crisis only crisis they won't happen some serious conflict. So for the 20, uh, 2020, I do believe we will have more opportunity to have some special occasion. Our young military, young men, young ladies can have opportunity to train with United States armies. And uh, maybe according to United States NDAA or Taiwan Travel Act, yeah, you can send your some kind of uh, ship come to Taiwan. Mercy medical ship, not battleship. Mm. Try to using this kind of hint to tell someone, don't do something stupid. You cannot afford it. So if we keep sending this message, don't do something stupid. You cannot afford it. Now that, that will be very good strategy to stabilize Indo-Pacific, make this place become a democracy a democracy and the freedom allies, and that the economy can be keep prosperous. So, what the signal we need? You need to you not know, bilateral discuss, and uh, we are working on that, hoping it's going to happen in this year. Thank you for joining me today. Yeah, it's amazing. Me, thank you.